Hi, Virgo. My name is Misty, and I'm here to do the bullshit and the blessings for the first half of September. Sorry for stumbling over my words, but I'm not going to actually start this video over. I just had to do that a bunch of times for Taurus. So. Uh, this is for the first half of September, from the September the 1st through 15th. <laughs> I don't know what my problem is today. Okay, so what? Uh, let me just go ahead and get right into my disclaimer. These readings are meant to be timeless and general in nature. If the details fit for your situation, the reading is meant for you. But if they do not fit, please do not try to make them fit, as that will do more harm than good and is definitely not my intention. I am not a doctor, lawyer, or accountant. If you need advice in any of those areas, please consult a professional, and please do not do something simply because I suggest it in one of these readings that will do more harm than good and is definitely not my intention. Um, you are an adult who has responsibility for your own life. Please use that responsibility to your advantage. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to get some general energies from our Oracle deck and uh, the... Uh, Edgar Allan Poe tarot then we'll get the details from our tarot of the night and we'll do a quick pick a card to look at romance readings with this deck here before we move on to the charms so let's go ahead and give this a shuffle or excuse me a cut uh, another thing that I want to point out, for some reason when I sat down to work today um, I felt very drawn to change the decks that I was using. I don't know why I felt the need to pull these darker decks, but we're just going to go with it. Um, my plan was to, you know, do the readings for the earth signs first, which is what I'm working on right now. So, you know, if, if for some reason you are feeling the darker energies or the grief energies or anything like that, then, you know, you're in the right place. So, uh, we have the song... Invitation by Ash Nico. Also, if you're new here and you don't know why I call out the songs, uh, it's just because I've learned that uh, typically the songs will somehow, some way relate to the reading if I just pay attention <laughs> because I like to listen to music when I read the cards. And so I, I happen to notice one day I was doing, uh, I was actually reading an, a chart, an, a natal chart for somebody, or no, a transit chart for somebody. And the songs that were coming through were, you know, the same, they were songs that were corresponding to what was happening in the astrology chart, the, the aspects that I was seeing in the astrology chart. And so I, I asked this friend, I said, hey, does this song mean anything to you? And she said, oh my God, yes. So since then, I've learned my lesson to always pay attention to the music. So you should too. Um, if I call out the name and artist, or excuse me, the name of a song with the artist, so it's best to Google it, look up the lyrics and see how it applies to you or your situation. And with that said, we also have the song, I'm Gonna Love You Through It, Martina McBride. There we go. Interesting. So there's some sort of new beginning happening for Virgo. Let's see. We've got the pumpkin with the third harvest. Oh, so it says uncaging the spirit within thou. Oh, excuse me. I have to start that over. Uncaging the spirit within thou, the fertile power you hold. To taste your buttery velvet upon tongue is a gift I shall cherish each day that comes. Daughters of the woods, feel thy sacred swell with suppleness. Taste the gathering of honey's milk filling your emptiness. Now we have strength with the Knight of Wands. Strength says, a feeling for which I have no name has taken possession of my soul. And then the Knight of Wands says, but lo, a stir is in the air, the wave, there is a movement there. So it's interesting to me that it talks about movement with the Knight of Wands. And we have like autumn energy, which means everything is sort of it needs to be harvested, but it's dying as well, right? So there is some sort of grief here, or there's maybe the fear of something dying. Uh, 
we have the fool on the bottom of the deck over here so there is some sort of new beginning happening let's get some more details just to see also when we're if you if you're listening to this song here it's literally talking about cancer And like I said, I am not a doctor. If you like, you re, like, please, please follow your doctor's advice. Um, but there's something yeah. happening here in regards to sure. health and healing. It's a, there's a there's this fear that something is dying, or maybe the, a fear that someone is dying. But then there's a new beginning with the full card and we have the black cat on the bottom of the other deck it says uh, on the black cat it says there's a curious journey into the depths of the unknown hidden so deep that only the brave will gracefully will gracefully return with light in their eyes and shadow leading home it's almost like a near-death experience or something interesting and then look now we have banshee Heed my warning, dear child, for what I hold is far from unsung lullabies. Swallow a nail and you can expect bleeding from within. Is somebody doing something, okay, is somebody doing something that is toxic and there's like, oh, interesting. And then the song that just came on is like a totally new energy, but we're just, hold on a second and I'll get to that in just a second. I feel like there's something that's either somebody's doing something toxic and there's there's a warning here that like you you're it's like it's like one person is saying to somebody else like you're killing yourself or I'm afraid you're killing yourself because of something toxic number one um, but then you know there's like an issue of like health as well because of this black hat, all of it, to, it's just coming through this way as, as health. There's some sort of health concern. And there's something toxic. Maybe if there is cancer involved, maybe it's the chemo. But there's this new beginning here. And look, you've got the Nine of Wands, which is a card that says, don't give up. You're almost there. You're almost there. Don't give up. Um, okay, let's, before I keep going, let's get some more uh, details here. Um, so the song, I, I'm still kind of stuck trying to figure this out, but the song that's in the background is like, um, teenage love affair, Alicia Keys. Okay, so um, and it's interesting to me that we that had the it's like ten, eleven. So it's an ascension of numbers. Like uh, things are growing, getting bigger. However that means, but um, but there's this love. There's something about love attached to this. Like, there's a, the excitement for something new. I'm, kind of, um, I'm not going to lie, I'm kind of confused by this energy because on one hand I feel like there's this fear of death, but then on the other hand there's this excitement for love. So take that however that resonates for your situation. Oh, look at it. You've got the Ten of Cups. Okay, with the Eight of Cups, Ten of Pentacles, and Knight of Pentacles. So, okay, interesting. 
very interesting. Somebody has to walk away from something else in order to find their Ten of Cups is what this is saying. It's very clear to me, but it's happening very, very slowly. And look at this Knight of Pentacles is carrying a scythe. So death is coming through again. Uh, so maybe for somebody, this death, this toxicity has to do with a relationship that they're already in, that they need to get rid of so that they can find their Ten of Cups. But for somebody else, I feel like maybe there was some sort of death or something that happened that caused a lot of grief. And now that there's like, there's been healing over it, it's like now there's this love coming in. There's some sort of something new that's exciting. We have the song, Jesus Take the Wheel, Carrie Underwood. Very interesting because see, we're talking about near-death experiences. And she's like, in the song, she talks about... You know, in the very first chorus, she's talking about this almost car, this car accident, like where, where, yeah, the baby's in the back seat, blah, blah, blah. So it's like, again, there's this warning of something that's dangerous or toxic or whatever. And now here's another chance. Maybe there was a death or something that was, or something that was very, something not, you know, not so whatever something that caused grief and now there's been healing over it and now we have some sort of love coming in um, i'm going to go ahead and actually move on to the romance portion because it's pretty clear to me the way this is coming through or uh, actually no she's talking about the car accident right now where she's she's talking about the baby in the back seat sleeping like a rock She says, um, from now on tonight, Jesus, take the wheel. So this is like I'm I'm giving it up to the hands of fate. And that and giving it up to hand to the hands of fate or giving it to God, basically, um, is what it brings in your abundance. It brings in your joy, your happiness, your excitement, your new beginning. Yeah, we're going to stick with these three. So that's our three groups. Group one, group two, group three. Uh, what we're going to do with this, uh, I'm going to get one more tarot card on each group. And then, um, so for whichever group that you choose here, this is going to give you a special message for your specific romantic situation. Not family or friends, we're talking romance here. my fault. Something is... So, um, a couple of times as I'm shuffling, I'm like being kind of clumsy and messing things up. And so take that however it resonates, because I don't ever take anything for granted in one of these readings. Not the way that I feel, whether it's physically, emotionally, anything that happens, any of that. You know, if it, if it applies to your situation, take it. But yeah, just that whole clumsiness. Like maybe you have said or done something as well that is... Um, that you're like worried you've messed things up or something. I don't know. Because of clumsiness. Oh, God. See what I mean? Like that was just sheer. I didn't aim right when I was shuffling and I just made a huge mess. But it was all me. It wasn't like like normally when I'm shuffling and, sh and doing the cards in a reading when they fall because, you know, 
notes they're falling for whatever for the reading this was me being clumsy so there's something about that happening for somebody Uh, we have the song, and in fact, the lyric that says, I've been searching for the daughter of the devil himself. I've been searching for an angel in white. So we have the song, One of These Nights by the Eagles. Ugh. There we go. Barely even got started, and there it was. Okay. So, um, all right, group one. We have the Wheel of Fortune with the Ace of Swords. So being honest is what's going to bring, I feel like you want, like you want some relationship. Being honest is what's going to bring you what you want. Okay, that's number one. So for group two, we have the Page of Pentacles with the Five of Mirrors. And so um, I feel like with this particular Five of Mirrors, every time I see it, I always feel because of the heart, the way that it's a mirror that's cracked, it's not just the one behind her, but the one that she's holding in her hand, it has two hearts there. I say, I think both parties have had pain. I think both parties um, are feeling vulnerable because of this Page of Pentacles. Uh, also is because of the pain, but the Page of Pentacles makes me think that, you know, you're both feeling vulnerable in this situation um, because pages typically come across as immature energy, and I'm not saying feeling vulnerable makes you immature. It's just um, because of the fact that it's immature energy, it makes me think of children, and children are typically vulnerable, right? Um, so... There's something about feeling vulnerable because of the pain, the past hurt, the past, all of the stuff that's broken your heart in the past here. So you guys are mirroring each other, basically, is what this is saying. But also, with this particular page of pentacles, um, I think the knowledge of that, like, do you see how she kind of looks happy? And it sort of looks like she's done some magic trick to make that um, snowflake in her hand um you know, sort of shine, right? So basically it's saying, you know, now that you're aware of the fact that you guys are both going through pain and um, you're mirroring each other, you know, maybe you can sort of not really um, change the way that you interact, but you can, um, you can compromise because of the knowledge, basically. You know, you can, you can tweak some things to, to make things easier. All right, so now we're going to move on to group three. Well, so we have temperance. So there's some healing and balance that needs to happen in this situation. And it's interesting that we have two fives with the tower. One of them is, so we have the Hierophant, the Five of Wands, the Tower, and then the Queen of Cups. So this is probably like a marriage or partnership. It's like a long-term kind of situation. Um, if it's not a marriage, that it is a long-term committed situation where there has been some arguing, probably fighting, even, I'm sure, competition that may maybe, um, you know, left somebody feeling out in the cold because the tower isn't falling here, but look at how dark and dreary and, you know, kind of scary that tower looks. Like, I don't know if I'd want to live there. <laughs> maybe visit for a haunty, uh, ha haunted mansion tour for some fun and excitement, but like, do you, would you want to live there permanently? <laughs> no. Um, but anyway, so it's less somebody feeling very, very sensitive and emotional. Um, so there needs to be some healing and, um, you know, balance brought into this situation, especially if it's a long-term committed situation like a marriage. There needs to bring, be some healing. And we have the song um, My Immortal by Evanescence in the background. Okay, so let's move on to the, the charms. Interesting that the Virgo die came out in a Virgo reading, um, and it came out right next to a couple of pieces of terminated quartz. 
as well as the Star of David and this anchor here. Um, so this whole message is all about faith, right? Um, but it's also about speaking up, speaking your truth, how speaking, speaking up and saying what you need to say is going to be very cleansing and very healing for you, uh, also very protective for you. There's a very good chance someone is going to be leaving your life with the chair here, um, and I, I feel like it's probably going to hurt. Uh, we do have the $100 bill that's upside down here. Um, yeah, it's going to hurt, but it's also going to bring a huge awakening. It's like there's there's a lot of, it's like it's really going to open your eyes. This The loss of this person is really going to open your eyes. Um, and like your emotions, I think, are going to be very big, but you, it's really important for you to express how you feel, talk about it, talk it out. Um, we also have this circus tent. So the interesting thing about the way that it came out is that it's upside down. So it's saying you're leaving chaos and entering security because of where it landed here in the root chakra. So, you know, it, at least there's some positive, you know, other, uh, there is pain here. Um, and the advice to definitely talk with someone about your pain, but it's this pain leaves behind chaos. So it's actually better for you in the long run. And then it's interesting, we were talking right here about, you know, really being honest about how you feel, talk about how you feel. And then we've got the wool over the solar plexus chakra and the wolf has his mouth open. So I always see him as howling. Um, the solar plexus is an action that needs to be taken. So you need to howl, you need to cry maybe, you need to scream, you need to talk, you need to do something, possibly to family because the wolf, um, I see it as a very family-oriented animal. They're pack animals. And then we also have the uh, baby carriage here. Um, and so, you know, having the baby carriage here speaks to family some more. So again, if you need to cry, do it. Yeah, this one, especially with the end of this song, is kind of breaking my heart, and I kind of want to cry. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this here. I hope that resonates. If it does not, please stick around. There may be another reading for you here on the channel that does. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, tell your friends, hit the notification bell, anything that you can to help me get my channel out there as I'm new here. And I thank you for watching.